Welcome back, everyone. Hope you guys are doing great. I wanted to share something that will hopefully open anyone's eyes to how demonic this political setup is, this left versus right, which seems like you have good guys versus bad guys. However, we came across something today in our Enoch study that really blew my mind. I've seen, you know, a little snapshot of this before when I came across this chapter, but we were doing some digging, and thanks to some of our supporters who join us in our study, one of them, Deborah, found something that really reveals that there is no coincidence here when it comes to the demonic origins of our political system. And it's something that reminds me of what my dad used to always say when people asked him about politics. He would say that politics is a word that can be broken down into two parts, with poly equaling many, and ticks, of course, are those blood-sucking parasites. So together you have many blood-sucking creatures or parasites, and this stuck with me for years. I always thought about that and just never really got involved with politics. But to get to the prophecy or the parable that we were looking at or more of a vision in Enoch, it's in chapter 86, and this particular vision has to do with the fallen and their offspring, the Nephilim. And so you have Enoch's vision, and I'm just going to read starting at verse 3, and he says, And again I saw in the vision, and looked at the heavens, and behold, I saw many stars, and they fell from heaven, and were thrown from heaven near the first star, because one star already fell, the leader of the fallen. This is about the fallen angels here. And among those cattle and bullocks, there they were, with them, pasturing among them, and I looked at them, and behold, they all let out their members, I'm not going to say the other word so we don't get flagged or anything, like horses, and began to mount the cows and bullocks. And these all became pregnant and brought forth elephants and camels and asses. These are the three races of giants it talks about at the beginning of Enoch, the Nephilim. And if you're not familiar with this story, the Nephilim eventually, for their punishment, had to fight to the death, and their spirits became unclean spirits, or demons. And so these demons in this vision were represented by elephants, camels, and asses. And when I first saw this, I knew, of course, we had the elephants that represent the Republicans, and the donkeys, or the ass, that represents the Democrats. And so I went back to these logos, and I think I talked about this in another video, how the elephant literally looks like the model of the earth that we now believe in with the firmament above and the stars that have fallen down. And some of them still have one star up in the sky. But this vision was about falling stars, a lot like Revelation. And in this vision, again, the stars represented the fallen angels. And so the donkey is the same thing. If you remove the head, it's literally the earth on pillars with the dome above and the stars that have fallen. And there's many variations of this. Some of them still have it to where the stars are in the firmament. And this is what you see when you look it up, how it's changed over time. And we had Matthew Beavers joining us in this hangout, and he said, oh my goodness, look at the stars. And when I did, we noticed that the ones in the modern day are now upside down. Looks extremely familiar. Those of you who are familiar with the symbols they put out there, the pentagrams and all of that, upside down, that's what you see. I don't believe this is a coincidence when people make a change like that. It's for a reason. But the third party, I was talking and I said, man, please don't tell me there is a camel that represents another party. And, of course, somebody that was doing some research while we were talking, Deborah, she goes, oh, my goodness, you know, there's this camel and it represents one of the original parties known as the Prohibition Party. You cannot make this up. So we have literally the three animals that represent the Nephilim being represented by three political parties. And so this Prohibition Party, it's one of the oldest existing third parties in the United States and the third longest active party. No joke. Founded in 1869, you've got a camel, and now we have all three of these Nephilim, who they know who they are in this book. They know what represents them. And so they like to show it. And I know that this 
little donkey over here. It actually looks kind of like a unicorn. I don't know what they were thinking here. I guess that's supposed to be the side view of the ear, but to me it just looks like a little unicorn. And so there you have it, the animals from Enoch's vision that represent the offspring of the fallen, the ones you read about in Genesis as well. They did help corrupt all flesh. They were a big part of why we had to have a flood. They were consuming flesh, devouring flesh. And so that's why I stay away from politics. And when people ask me what side I'm on, I'm not on a side. I'm on the father's side. And when you look at what they are trying to get you to do with politics, even the definition, this is the first definition that popped up. It says that politics is the activities associated with the governance of a country or other area, especially the debate or conflict among individuals. So especially conflict among individuals or parties having or hoping to achieve power. It's all about that power, ruling this world, falling in line with what the world wants you to. And I know that a lot of people out there feel like we can just save everybody with politics and with getting the right side to win. And I personally feel like that's an illusion. I'm not saying lay down and don't fight for your rights. There's a lot of things we can do to help make this place a better place. And a lot of that has to do with us not following orders and doing things the way they want us to. But as far as the political system is now, it is all ran way different than what we imagined as children when we were learning about this stuff really thought we could make a difference, really thought that anybody could just grow up and become president of the United States. But that's not how it works. And we see even in the Bible, when they wanted a king, that's where we went south. The father was our king, and everyone wanted to be like the other nations. They wanted a king. They wanted a ruler. And there was a warning from the prophet Samuel what would happen, and everything he warned about came true, and we are suffering and hurting because of that today, we still have that exact same setup where we are being ruled over and they're taking from us just like Samuel warned, but the people wanted a king anyways. They were stubborn. So that's what they got. And now it is really deep rooted into our culture. And you just, you, you can barely have a conversation without this stuff being brought up. Yes, it's laughable some of the things that happen in politics and it's entertaining, but try not to fall into that divide that they want you to. It is easy to do. Many of us have fallen into it, and I've seen some strong-minded believers falling for some of these tactics, and it's been heartbreaking to watch. So hopefully this will wake somebody up who is under that spell, so to speak. And I personally, you know, almost fell for the same types of tricks. It's easy when they are putting the stuff out there and allegedly censoring and persecuting the other side. It makes you feel like you really have to join in the fight, and they've done a good job because they literally have half the population hating one person, half the population hating the other person, and then they start hating the followers of this other person. And before you know it, hate and unforgiveness is just ruling over the entire country. And that's how good they are at making these false reality shows. And so I hope this helps to uh, clarify the demonic undertones to our political world and why I feel like we should stay away from that stuff. But there it is, right there, straight from the Book of Enoch, a book they don't want you reading. And so far, we're up to like almost chapter 90, and we're getting to the end, and I haven't seen anything that goes against the word that we already have. So far, so good. I'm not saying put all your trust in that one book, because there's parts of it that weren't with the Dead Sea Scrolls. However, when we match up those fragments to the Dead Sea Scrolls from the current translations, it's very close. So I'll keep studying it out. And uh, if you've never tested it, we did a, a good video I'll put in the description called Testing Enoch, where we had some Bible scholars come on and talk about some of the things that most people don't know about this book. Because for me personally, it has answered a lot of questions like where these demons came from. And now we're seeing what Enoch saw in his vision, what they were represented by. And so elephants and donkeys, it's not random. No coincidence. Just wanted to share that, make this quick. And uh, we got a lot going on. This is totally something I didn't plan on talking about. We are preparing for the Kingdom Crew Conference. I have some things that I have just came across that have totally changed 
my view on how the events of creation took place. I'll be sharing that for the first time with the Kingdom Crew Conference here in October. I think we're going to be presenting on October 17th, and there will be dates after that. So I will, I will keep all that. I'll put links in the description so you can find more information on that. It's going to be powerful stuff. This is one of the most powerful studies I've ever done or put together, and I'm hoping to make it very clear, understandable, and concise so you guys can see where we're at in time and what's about to happen. Because that's the questions I always had when I was a new believer is, what's next? What are we preparing for? How are we supposed to live? What are we supposed to do? So a lot of those questions will be answered in this presentation, I hope. And so um, I look forward to that. We're also still working on creation standard content for homeschool. It's just been tough. It's been a slow go. I'm doing classes myself for the gifted certification, and it's a lot like a master's program, even though you don't get paid more after you get this certification. It's a lot of busy work, and so I've been busy doing all of these different things at the same time. So um, hopefully we can have some uh, more fun and do some interactive live videos here pretty soon with the people that are part of our free sample project where we're essentially just giving out free samples of what next year will be like. Not as high quality because our time is limited, but if you're interested in that, send us an email at thecreationstandard at gmail.com. That's also in the description, and we will add you to our list of people who can get information on how you can get involved in our program that is going to be offering. Send us an email to thecreationstandard at gmail.com, and I will add you to the list. The list is growing, so it looks like we may be able to do it full-time next year and step away from the public education system for the first time in almost 15 years. So that'll be an interesting change of pace, and I'll be full go. I'm not going to hold back on that. It'll be something that I'm dedicated to and do that full-time while I'm also focusing on ministry on the side, similar to how we are now. And so it's going to be a, a major change of pace and a journey that I am looking forward to so hopefully that works out. If not, we'll still just provide free stuff for you guys that are interested. But in the meantime, we will get back to work. You guys have all been a blessing. Thank you for your prayers, your support, sharing the film that just came out, Origins Untold. It's still available to stream, and so you can go back and see our live video where we shared all that information. It is a really good, safe video to watch with the family, and it's high quality. People can follow it. And just see a snapshot of what we really believe and how it's totally different than what the world is telling them. So good video, high quality, make it a movie night. And um, support Fasuk Films. They really work hard and they have future plans to do similar projects. So anyways, it's been fun. I'll see you guys around real soon. <laughs>